What's up guys, Mike here from The Art of Guitar. Today I wanted to talk about three traits that I've seen in my guitar students over all these years of teaching. I think I'm up to about 27 years now of teaching. And I've seen three particular traits that either make or break a guitar student. So uh, I'll name the three one at a time, but I'll do the contrast. So I'll say, okay, this is why the best students have this trait versus the opposite for maybe the students that didn't go so far. And so I wanted to talk about those today. And if you feel like you possess some of these traits, it's a good thing to, to uh, be aware of and to consider and to see if it's either propelling you forward or holding you back. And then you could change them if you're aware of them, hopefully. So the first trait is a genuine excitement or willingness to learn guitar. When someone comes in and they're just like, yeah, I wanted to play guitar ever since I saw it on TV one time, or I heard it on the song, or I saw it in a movie, or I played Guitar Hero, there seems to have to be a strong reason to play guitar. And sometimes, like in my case, it was just because I wasn't like some popular kid in school. I spent a lot of time in my basement by myself in my bedroom. And instead of just watching TV or playing Nintendo back then, I wanted to do something else. And I'd always been interested, because uh, when I was young, I heard Kiss in a musical instrument, whether it was guitar or drums. So for me, just sitting there with a the guitar and getting really good at something just appealed to me. So whenever a student comes in with that sort of characteristic, I get excited as a teacher because I feel like they're like me when I started and I want to show them all the things that I wish I would have learned right off the bat. And usually these students have this urge to want to express themselves in some way or they want to be creative. And this might seem a little dark, but it's true. A lot of really great guitar students I've had have had some sort of, uh, of a traumatic childhood. Maybe traumatic is too big of a word, too strong of a word, but maybe they didn't have the most ideal childhood and they feel some darkness, some pain inside, and they want to be able to let that out somehow. So in connecting with an instrument like guitar, it's like they found a new best friend. So they found a way to feel better through all their pain by playing this piece of wood with strings on it. Seems weird, but it's worked for me, it's worked for a lot of people. So now let's contrast that. So the students that don't do very well are the ones who maybe were forced into playing guitar, or they just, they're just kind of apathetic towards learning it. And I know right away when I'm teaching them the first lesson and they're just sort of like zoning out. And it's sort of weird for me to have to try to force the guitar on somebody because for me, this is the greatest thing ever and to show somebody and then they don't really care. It's sort of a weird feeling. And so sometimes oh, after a few lessons, if I don't feel like they're really picking up on it or they would rather be somewhere else, I usually talk to the parents and say, you know, maybe this isn't the right instrument for them. And then maybe they move on to something else. Maybe they're supposed to be a drummer. Maybe they're supposed to be the singer of a band and express themselves that way. Or maybe just music isn't right, right for them at this time and they should go play hockey or something. One time I had a student come in and he just looked kind of like bored. And I asked him, why do you even want to play guitar? And he's like, well, I didn't want to, but my parents said I had to play some instrument and the guitar seemed like the least lame instrument. So I think it was between the flugelhorn, I think, and guitar. I don't know why it was those two choices, but he went with guitar. So that wasn't really the best news for me as a t guitar teacher, because I was like, you know, this is going to be an uphill climb for both of us. But there is that off chance that sometimes, even when you don't want to do something and you start on it, you find out that you actually do like it and you pick up steam. I found that to be extremely rare though, uh, but it has happened. All right, let's talk about the second characteristic. My best students were always willing to think long term. And that brings with it a whole bunch of things. Okay, so first of all, if you're thinking long term, you will have a lot more patience because if you can't get something, you're not gonna freak out and trash the guitar. Instead, you're going to see it as just a little hurdle to get to your ultimate destination of getting really great at an instrument. So a lot of my best students have that mindset where they're like, okay, I can do this, this is gonna be a long journey, so it doesn't matter if I suck at this or this or this, it's okay. And they're also willing to feel the pain that it takes to have the breakthroughs that are essential for getting good at anything. So it's kind of like working out. If you feel the pain of doing pull-ups and you, you hate the feeling of not being able to do even one and you just give up, that's sort of like short-term thinking. So my best students that I've ever had are willing to feel the pain. They're willing to put the guitar down after practicing for a long time, uh, frustrated, but also with that willingness and that fortitude to persevere and pick it up the next day and try again. Okay, let's contrast that with the short-term thinking where someone won't be able to get something, they get really frustrated and they just want to put the guitar down and leave. I've had that happen a few times where somebody just couldn't make a chord sound clean, so they freaked out and they just wanted to walk out the door. And I know that feeling, but I also know that uh, they're not going to get very far in anything in their life if that's how they approach everything. 
So let's go back to the pull-up idea. If they just struggle to do that one pull-up and they just can't do it, even after a week, they can only maybe do a half a pull-up. They're more willing to just stop after that week and give up because they associate the pain with it. So the difference between the two mindsets is that if you have a short-term thinking mindset, the pain will cause you to just want to stop because why would you want to do something that's painful, right? But if you have the long-term mindset. What's great about that is you see the big picture and you know that this pain is just a small part of climbing the ladder to get to where you want to be. So it's really strange how just that little change of how you see it can make all the difference in whether you carry on through the pain or you just let it stop you. When it comes to my best students, they're always aware of how little they know on the guitar, but they're okay with that and they're open to learning. They know, okay, I might be able to play some stuff, but there's so much out there that I don't know. And it keeps them very humble. And it's really cool to see that because maybe they'll know 25 chords, how to play them. But they're aware that there's this thing called jazz out there. And there's a lot of other stuff that they have to learn before they can even feel halfway competent. So my best students are aware of that, but they don't let it stop them. And because they're humble about the enormous amount of knowledge that's out there for guitar, for music in general, uh, instead of getting frustrated and thinking I'll never get it, they have this other attitude, which is there's so much to learn and I'm excited to start my journey into learning it. Now contrast that with a lot of people I see mostly in the comments section of some of my videos. Uh, it really bums me out when I put up a video about anything and somebody always has to say, oh, you didn't know that or people don't know this. I knew this 20 years ago. That's the kind of attitude that I think is plaguing guitar students. Uh, it always has. I mean, it's not a new thing at all. We just didn't have YouTube or comment sections back when I was learning. But I'm just as guilty of it as anybody. I remember when I was just getting into recording and music production, and my friend owned all this cool gear. He had a studio in his basement, and I would go on these AOL chat rooms. This is how long ago this was. And I would brag about, I have this piece of gear. Oh, you didn't know this existed? So I was that person back in the day. And I'll never forget, I accidentally left the chat up one time, and my friend who owns the studio saw it. And he totally busted me on it. He just came up and he, he knew I was totally just being a jerk. And he's like, so you own a U87, huh? Well, that's pretty cool. What did you get it? And I just turned red. I could just, I just knew I was so busted. And that was my way of learning that I was just being a huge ass, you know? And after that, I got a little more humble. I mean, it took a long time, but I got my butt kicked way too many times. To, to not be humbled, I guess, by it. And then when I realized how little I did know, I actually started learning from there. I remember hearing that Eric Johnson, one of the best guitar players of our time, every time he tours, he takes a guitar lesson in whatever city he's in. And I'm always worried he's gonna call me and say, hey, can I do a guitar lesson? And I'll just be like, what do I show Eric Johnson? It would just be me asking him questions the whole time. So I guess that all comes down to doing what Bruce Lee said and just, you know, saying like an, a, a cup that's full cannot be filled. You know, if you're full of what you think you know, you, can, you can't learn anything above that. So you have to empty yourself. It's just an old proverb so that you could be filled with real knowledge. So keep that in mind when you play guitar. Keep that humble attitude and you'll see amazing things start to happen. So those are the big three traits, in my opinion. Having a good reason to want to start playing guitar. Two, having that long-term mindset when it comes to learning. And the third trait is having that humble mindset that even if you do know a lot of guitar and you're pretty good, you still have a long ways to go. And that should humble anybody to want to keep learning, keep getting better, keep digging for those details and uh, getting far because of that. All right, everyone. So hopefully you possess the positive side of these three traits. But if you possess the negative side, the dark side, we'll call it, then at least somebody told you about it. You're aware of it. And once you know about it, you could do something about it. You could change your ways. It's not too late. It's kind of like that. What was that cartoon? Knowing is half the battle. Uh, now you know and knowing is half the battle. That's uh, It's been my problem my whole life. A lot of the times I was unaware that I had some of these negative traits and took a lot of pain to figure them out. So I just wanted to let you know today what I feel are the most important traits for a great guitar player to have versus someone who's going to have a very hard time and struggle. All right, guys, we'll catch you at the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.